welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on episiotomy. Episiotomy is defined as the incision, which is made through the perineum, to enlarge the diameter of the vulva outlet and to assist childbirth. These are the indications to do episiotomy. So the maternal indications are if there is maternal distress, a rigid perineum, or the mother is tired or unable to push. So we need to do episiotomy to enlarge the diameter of the vulva outlet and to help the birth of the, leaf of the child. Fetal indications are like if there is fetal distress or macrosomic baby where the baby is too large in size, premature baby, bridge presentation or shoulder dystocia. Whereas other indications are instrumental delivery such as using forceps or vacuum delivery. There are three main types of episiotomy incisions. So the first picture shows the midline or medial episiotomy incision. Second picture is the medial lateral incision, which is the most preferable method and the most commonly used method. Third type is the J shape incision. So to compare the types of episiotomy, you can look at the advantages and the disadvantages. So first for the midline incision, the advantages are quite a lot where it is the easiest to make there is a faster healing, less pain, which is pain on sexual intercourse after delivery, and also less bleeding. However, there is a disadvantage where there is a risk of extension to the anal splinter, which we want to avoid in episiotomy. Whereas the other type, which is the more preferable type, the medial lateral incision, it is a best protection against the splinter damage. Because as you can see, the incision is made to the sideways, so it is less likely to cause damage to the anal sphincter if compared to the midline episiotomy incision. However, for medial lateral method, there are disadvantages such as great uh, difficulty to repair, more bleeding, longer healing time, greater postpartum pain, and also more dyspareunia. So the reason why the mid midline incision is has a higher risk of extension to the anal splinter is because it cuts the aponeurosis of the muscles rather than the bodies. So there is a higher risk of extension into the rectum. And the healing time for episiotomy incision is around 4 to 6 weeks, which is the average duration, depending on the size of the incision and also the type of the suture material used. So this is the procedure for episiotomy. Before episiotomy, infiltrate the region with local anesthetic, which is 10 ml of 0.5% lignocaine, or we can use pudendal block. And episiotomy is done during crowning. The perineum is thinned out and the fetal head forcibly extends the vagina outlet. So it is done during crowning. And after the episiotomy, we have to control the expulsion of the fetal head. So after the delivery of the baby, we have to repair the episiotomy incision. So the types of sutures that we use are continuous suture for the mucosa, interrupted suture for muscles, and for the skin, we use subcuticular stitching. And the material that is used is absorbable polyglycolic acid. The advantages of this type of suture material is that it has tensile strength, non-allergic properties, so and also lower risk of infections. So there are quite a lot of advantages. So this is the steps for repair, where we start a stitch 1 cm above the apex of the incision, and different types of sutures for different structures, such as mucosa, muscles of skin. Suture up the skin, and then tie the knot, and the repair is completed. So there are a few complications of episiotomy, such as extension or tears into the rectum. They might be bleeding, excessive bleeding, infection of the episiotomy incision, swelling, and also it might cause local pain or dyspareunia, which is pain on sexual intercourse. So that's all for this video. Thank you.